world where nuclear war has begun. Vampires fought back in super real 3D. I recently did some low key lighting and you're just going for a really moody, shadowy feel. The thing about it is that it can be kind of tricky because you have to make a decision whether you want those light sources to be really obvious and it's just like a direct singular light that's happening over the subject. Or if you want it to be a little bit softer, more ambient, more background, then you're gonna work more with bouncing lights off of the walls, ceilings, etc., of what's available. You're basically kicking to the curb this idea that you might have heard of, of having skin tones sitting at around 70 IRE, so that way that's like supposed to be the most flattering for skin tones. You're kind of just not thinking on that scale at all. In fact, most of everything I filmed, like the entire picture, is living under 50 IRE. And sometimes the band members are just sitting more so in the shadows and they're the darker parts of the image. So it's a different way to work and it can be a little intimidating at first to do it because we're all so scared of not having enough light that we end up with tons of noise in our shadows, in our blacks. And the thing that you have to understand if you're gonna go this route is that you're gonna have to live with this decision of it being this moody and dramatic because at the end of the day, you are gonna wanna crush those blacks so you don't have noise in it. This is a shot that I did on the EOS R that was living on a, a Ronin. Um, it was filmed in C-Log, so this is without any effects. You can kind of see what I was seeing through my monitor. Over here, we can see our scopes. The only reason the black levels are that race is because it was filmed in a log profile, so it looks that milky and desaturated. If we turn on the effects after I've produced contrast with it, you can see how low it's sitting. And the highest parts are still under, I mean, there's a couple little spikes, but really the majority of this is sitting under 50 IRE, which is really low and it's a different feel if we just see how this shot kind of looks when it's moving. You know, it's just, it's got a lot of shadows to it. This is gonna play choppy, by the way, because uh, well, that was 4K, there's some 6K, I got tons of effects on here and this and that, but I thought it better to show you so you could see with and without the effects to get a more of an idea of what I was seeing through the camera and making these lighting decisions. Um, here's like another side of the room here. Now here you can see with Dave, obviously very direct light. I wanted that to be a hard, harder light. I uh, have a Fresnel all the way back over here that you really actually see the Fresnel in some of the shots in the video. Totally intentional, just liked it. I like that sometimes I like seeing some of the production uh, in, a, in, in a band video. You know, you're used to seeing bands on stages with lights, etc. So I felt like I wanted this to be a hard light there, but these other lights are really just bounces. I don't have lights directly on either of the other guys over here. This is just bouncing off the walls. You can see how many, how much the uh, drummer here is sitting in the shadows, um, but it's a really cool vibe. And if I turn off the effects, you can see not that far from home on, I mean, after the color grade, it's still relatively pretty close. I did not boost those shadows very much, I wouldn't want to start getting a lot of noise in the image. Again, you're gonna to have to live with this decision to have shadows. And yes, there's some spikes here, but over here on the scopes, but really that's just this symbol up here. I mean, yes, there's some light reflections, but as far as the people, as far as the actors or the performers, it's sitting pretty darn low. I mean, this is mostly sitting around 30 IRE. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty different way to approach lighting talent if you're gonna have them that lowly lit but it does produce an image. These fighting scenes are just a lot brighter. Those are natural. Well, I'm doing a making of for this visual EP and that will be out shortly in the next couple of weeks. Do look for it. It's gonna be a fun in-depth onset experience of what this was like. It, it ended up being two full music videos plus a couple of other songs with some other stuff. It's a 20 minute visual music video film album EP, whatever you wanna call it. Super cool. Anyway, back over to this. Here's like another example of a lighting scheme. Um, had going on over here. So this is, if we uh, show you what it was without it. So, I mean, yeah, I, I toyed around a lot with saturation levels, but ultimately I kind of, I wanted him more in the dark. I wanted just a little spotlight here on Rich, but a lot of this is just sitting in a pretty low key lit environment. And this is done a lot more on professional productions that are sent, you know, trying to be cinematic. And I see it not being done a lot on um, people that are first starting out and trying to work with the lights. And a lot of times you'll just over light stuff. That is the right move if you're doing most corporate work. That is the right move if you're trying to make it flattering. But if you have the opportunity to do something kind of artsy and stuff, it sure is fun to play with the shadows. This is another example. Um, this was filmed on an FS7. 
and S log. So this is before the gray. This is more what I would see on set. However, I do use an Odyssey 7Q on that and that's an external monitor recorder. And on that monitor, I can apply a LUT that I can preview on. So I was seeing something closer to this, but it most certainly was not this. And this is a color grade afterwards that I decided on. I didn't even use their LUT. I used a bunch of other things and dialed in a bunch of personal stuff. This is pretty shadowy. This is without any color grading. Again, if we look at our scopes and everything, everything's really sitting in the shadows there. The brightest part's the wall back there, you know, just a bounce. So it's just kind of a fun way to do things. If you want to approach it, just think about these couple things. Know that when you are lighting something, you're making a conscious decision whether this is going to be a solid light source, like that's directly pointed at the person and know that it's probably gonna be pretty obvious feeling. It's a pretty exaggerated feel if you're gonna do that. If you want it to feel more natural or just artistically want to show more of the background and everything, then light just the background. And that is a really good thing to do regardless. In fact, whenever I'm lighting for an interview, one of my big secrets, I guess, I light the background first and I light the talent last. So I figure out the shot and the composition that I want and where the person's gonna be. And then I light the background first, see how much light I'm getting from that, and then put the key light on as the last thing. That is a huge dictator of how much I'm gonna light the talent. I do that for interviews almost every time. And if you're just not using any lights and you're trying to go completely off of a natural dark environment, it's probably not gonna be that great. I mean, all your decisions on your angles and your lensings are gonna be completely made on what the environment is providing you and you won't be able to manipulate that at all if you wanted the actor to be in a certain place or do a certain movement or go through a certain thing. You don't get to make nearly as many artistic decisions. You're just having to abide by what's there and there's a good chance that it's just not gonna be enough light. So as low as this key light look kind of feels, as low as the key light look is even in our scopes of what we're seeing, the reality is is that I still actually had a decent amount of light in there. I think I used six lights, you know, actual film lights, you know, so they're producing a lot of light. So don't think that just because you're going for shadows that you don't still need a lot of light. It's just about how you're directing the light and the intensity level that you're pushing into each panel if you're using 50% or 100%. So for a lower key light, you know, yes, in most cases, most of these lights were set around a 50% mark uh, rather than being full blast. But you want to be able to have more lights if you can afford it so that way you can space things out and paint the set the way that you would like it to be. Anyway, guys, take care. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did dig it, I put out episodes every week. Check me out. Uh, you can subscribe. That would be awesome. If not, just give me a like. That would be super cool. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.